nigeriano que abrange todos os sindicatos de trabalhadores. Que resta de julho, a Marele Teatro. Ela se chama com o Memória e Maria, a Memória e a Mer, um cântico de Leo Ferré. Industrial. So that sound, welcome to my world. When I was six years old, I had a little blue radio that my aunt gave me. And in the dark, I used to like to go on a corner and listen to the words that were coming out from it. Languages that I didn't know. And I realized that the world was one and larger that I knew the world that I live in it. When I was eight years old, I got to, to back the little prince. And I realized that I could actually travel through all those worlds that I could listen through my little radio. And then when I was 10 years old, my dad brought home a fantastic book of all places about Tibet. Um, and the cover was really glossy and colorful and beautiful. And I realized that the world was not only larger and with different worlds than the ones I knew, but it was colorful and people looking different than I did. Um, when I was 11, my mom gave me uh, a Kodak 110 camera and my fate was sealed. I've been experiencing the world ever since through my camera. The first photograph I took, the first portrait was at age 12. And it was um, of a gypsy woman uh, in the market. When I was um, going with my grandmother in the market, I saw this woman and her face was incredibly appealing to me and there was a lot of um, history on her face, on her clothes, her um, skirt dancing around her body and I was completely fascinated and I realized that there was a world to be explored, getting close to people. But the faces I got to see at home um, were broken faces. My mom is a trauma surgeon and she was doing the international circuit of conferences talking about people with broken faces and her claim to fame was how faithfully she could reveal people's faces. Uh, and then I understood and learned the concept of face and identity. So I decided as a rebellious teenager to not photograph the broken faces that my mom was rebuilding, or the world of the adults that was a world of war and hunger and disaster. I realized that I just wanted to photograph the common men, the daily faces, the faces that are hidden in plain sight, the faces of the obvious. So I set out to see the world and photograph people, but I wanted to do it up close. I didn't want to bring the world to me through a long lens. I didn't want to be immune to the world. I wanted to step in there, walk to the world, and see the faces, see the people, engage in that conversation on the visual dialogue that closeness produced. But that is a scary thing to do. Closeness doesn't come easily, much less when there are preconceptions and cultural um, filters that come to mind when we want to get close, and especially fear. So I continued traveling and getting close until I decided actually early on that I did not want to photograph kids because growing up in Colombia, the photographs of the kids that were populating the magazines and newspapers around the world were the street kids, were the kids that were sniffing glue, the kids that were killing each other with makeshift knife. And I didn't think that they, those kids were willing participant of that photographic carnage. I didn't think that the photographic process was really involving them as person, even if they were just little people. Um, until I was traveling in Eastern Nepal a few years back, and I was photographing a family, uh, mom and dad and the house. And there was this little girl, a five-year-old little girl named Tashi Sherpa. And she kept just going, following me around and looking at what I was doing. And I couldn't resist her gaze. She just was penetrating her mouth shut. But actually, she was letting me know how I was not making her participant of what we were doing. She was not part of this process of communication. And even though 
there were linguistic barriers between Tashi and I. I could know because I knew faces up until that point that she was asking me. She was begging me to make her part of the process. And I couldn't resist. And after photographing her mom and her dad, I photographed her. Uh, I did her portrait. And she was just looking at me. There was no other intention than for us to like be close and communicate. And then she went away, and I was like, OK, this is done. And she brought her doll. <laughs> and she wanted her doll. Her doll was her world, and she wanted to seal that moment of communion, sharing her world with me. So everything changed from that day because she completely disengaged me from everything that I had built up until that day. All many insensitive preconceptions, especially about kids. And then it just went downhill from that point on. <laughs> and I just couldn't resist but looking at kids everywhere everywhere I could go. But also, I am experiencing the globalization process and how globalization is taking care of a lot of the cultural identity and how it's taking away and it's stripping away things that are very specific and particular of one culture. Um, <laughs> these are called the mini monks, and this is a series for another tech talk that I need to tell you about it. But the big thing about globalization is that many things that are specific and particular about cultures are going to the grave with the elder. And a lot of things that make people <laughs> unique within their cultures are being stripped away. So what happens in our global world when tolerance is not part of the process of accepting the difference. And the faces that I photograph, I hope, are contributing to a global dialogue of differences, embracing differences and similarities, at the same time that it shows that there are many different perspectives in the world, and many different looks, and many ways, different ways to live. But in our daily cyber world, we're communicating uh, through the avatars, through constructions of selves. We have become not who we are, but who we represent on the cyber world. So what is going on now is the phase, the last frontier, its closeness, something that we don't really brave to do. Is our current world just keeping us closer to the people that live really far away and very detached from those that live closer to us? Is closeness something that we are really fearing so much because it makes us actually be in the moment, be who we are, and be present? Thank you.